so we decided to open source Corden because that's 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 the new Mirantis, right? We uh, the uh, the new Mirantis is the same as the old Mirantis. We're going 100% open source. Uh, all of our new projects are open source. Hi, this is your Sapna Bharatiya, and welcome to TFR. Let's talk today. We have with us once again Randy Bias, VP of Open Source Strategy and Technology at Mirantis. Randy, it's great to have you back on the show. It's great to be here, as usual. And today we are going to talk about a new open source project by Mirantis called Cordent. Talk a bit about the project. What is it all about? We have a new open source project called Cordent that we're very excited about. We are taking all of the learning that we have acquired over the last 10 years running uh, virtual machines at scale with OpenStack and then Kubernetes clusters at scale. We're seeing this kind of increase in terms of uh, not just cloud native applications, but AI powered applications where there's an acceleration. People are, have started to figure out that they need to deploy more of these faster in more different locations on cloud, on prem. You know, there's just sort of this general increase in terms of the need to deliver uh, workloads uh, sooner and faster. And so the problem that's people are finding is that Kubernetes has become the de facto application delivery mechanism. Now they have Kubernetes everywhere. They're running it on AWS, they're running it on Azure, they're running it on vSphere, they're running it on OpenStack, they're running it on Metal. All of their applications are running on top of it. So they've got this Kubernetes sprawl problem. And then again, we have an acceleration because now we have to have all these AI powered apps, AI enabled applications that are taking those um, cloud native applications to the next level. So now we have not only Kubernetes sprawl, we've got AI sprawl. So how do we constrain all that? How do we manage it? How do we understand what's going on? We can't have hundreds of different clusters that we're trying to manage. We need one central location where all of those clusters can be connected to. They can be managed. They can be, new ones can be created. Old ones can be deleted or archived. We can notif notice uh, uh, failures and do disaster recovery. We've got a single control point where we can actually understand what workloads are running where, on-prem, off-prem. And so the promise of Cordant is that it becomes this single platform or single system that can be used to build platforms to basically constrain all that. So we see that kind of sprawl problem intersecting with this the beginning of this kind of whole engineering uh, ethos or, you know, kind of idea around platform engineering, right? So there's this intent inside large enterprises to try to not only constrain all the sprawl, but figure out ways to, you know, accelerate developers or at least to not impede developers getting those new applications in production. So how do you do that? You create the set of golden paths they talk about in platform engineering. In order to do that, you need a system that you can basically put together yourself because every enterprise is different. The platform they need to build inside their business is different. So Cordon becomes this substrate, this kind of single fabric that you can use to manage any cloud, manage clusters on any cloud, public, private, any infrastructure, virtual machines, containers, bare metal, anywhere, and then use that to basically build your platform internally with the golden paths to help your developers to deliver their applications faster while staying within the guardrails that you need if you're governed and regulated. And when developers look at Cordant, uh, how, how does it affect their day-to-day -day life by using it? What problem it solves from them immediately, whether it's making them efficient or it's like taking a lot of time that they waste on managing a lot of things, as you also talked about the whole cloud native Kubernetes sprawl in the space. Right, so we, we, we see the developers as sort of the indirect consumers of Cordon. The primary target is platform engineers, platform leads, who are basically building a platform, an internal developer platform for their developers. So Kubernetes has been amazing in many ways. It's, it's got a bit of, of an opinion, but in many ways it's got no opinion. That's why its API is is basically you know extremely extensible. You don't get extensible uh, APIs in uh, opinionated systems. You get them in relatively unopinionated systems. But that also means that Kubernetes has lots of rough edges. And if you ask your average developer if they enjoy you know uh, developing on top of Kubernetes, the answer is probably no. 
However, if you talk to the average platform engineer or operator, what it's like to be able to use Kubernetes to run applications in production, they absolutely love it, right? It's handling all that lifecycle management. They have a repeatable way for delivering application workloads to a given location. They have a way for scaling them up and down. They have a way for doing live upgrades and rollbacks, like all the pieces that allow you to actually run an application in, in production, you know, are there. It makes their lives easier. So now what's needed is a way to take all of that goodness and abstract it out. So what Cordon does is it's the first step of many that we're going to be providing that allows platform engineers or operators to deliver a single point of control for managing hundreds or even thousands of Kubernetes clusters across any location, anywhere in the world, any cloud, any infrastructure, we don't care, and then to basically deliver a simpler user experience to their developers who can choose a certain golden path. So let's say, for example, your developers have decided they're going to deliver a new AI-powered application, and they're going to start applying some of the MLOps principles, which are an evolution of DevOps to AI, to building AI or ML pipelines, right? You, as the platform engineer, can basically build on top of Cordant using anything you want, Argo CD, Flux CD, Humanitex Platform Orchestrator, Syntasso's Platform Orchestrator. You can put those pieces on top to build your platform, your internal developer platform, and now it's easy for your developers to deploy that AI-powered workload using MLOps principles, GitOps principles if they want it, whatever kind of process they want to deliver that to production, but it's basically pre-canned for them. They want to deploy that application into 10 different clusters on AWS and 10 different clusters on Azure simultaneously. It's just the press of a button. If you look at the family of K0, that K0 is there. Cosmotron was also released, you know, a couple of, you know, uh, I think last year or so. Uh, talk a bit about uh, uh, the whole, you know, uh, what role does Cordon play in this open source family that Mirantis is creating? There's a couple of different ways to think about it. So the first is that K0s could be thought of as a data plane, your individual Kubernetes cluster. And Cosmotron could be thought of as a control plane for your data plane. And then uh, Cordon could be thought of as a super control plane. So it's a control plane for control planes. So right now it uses Cosmotron and K0s by default, although you do not have to do that if you don't want to, but that's the mechanism that it uses to basically manage tens to hundreds of clusters at a time. Another way to look at it is that K0s was sort of our entry point of figuring out how to build a hardened, super lightweight, single binary, secure um, version of Kubernetes CNCF certified distribution, soon to be in the CNCF as a sandbox project, by the way, that you know is designed to run for anywhere from the edge to a data center. And then after we figured that out, we said, okay, now we need a distributed control plane, or at least a semi-distributed control plane, which is, which is Cosmotron, which can run, you know, one to 10, say, distrib uh, ver uh, clusters of K0s. And then we said, okay, now we've got to get to the next level. How do you get to the point where you're running tens, hundreds, thousands of clusters all over the world? You need a single point of control to basically get that done. You need telemetry. You need observability and fin FinOps to be able to see what's going on. And then once you've got that single con super control plane running across K0s and Cosmotron or bare metal or any other uh, cluster API enabled version of Kubernetes, now you can basically do something special. Talk a bit about why you decided to open source Cordon. So we decided to open source Cordon because that's, that's, that's the new Mirantis, right? We, uh, the, uh, the new Mirantis is the same as the old Mirantis. We're going 100% open source. Uh, all of our new projects are open source. Um, and most importantly, Cordon is a baseline. So I think that it could be a little bit confusing because we're not stopping with Cordon. Cordon is the very beginning. It's a foundation for which we're going to build a lot more on top of. When we came at Cordon, we said, we want a multi-cluster, multi-cloud fabric that can be used to do platform engineering, to create uh, internal developer platforms. 
We want it to be as Kubernetes native as possible. We don't want to add any secret sauce. We don't want to do anything crazy. We're just going to use cluster API. We're going to use the component, the parts of cluster API that exist today, cap A, cap V, cap Z. We'll, we'll contribute back to those to make those better. We'll wrap it all up with other open source projects like Project Svelte OS, which is a key part of our state management. We'll make this thing as unopinionated as humanly possible so that it can be used as sort of the ultimate Lego uh, construction kit, right? And then once we've got that, we're going to start to build other pieces on top of it. So we're not stopping at Cordon. <laughs> That's just the beginning of where we're going in the future. You mentioned... Uh creating golden path. Can you talk about how does Cordon kind of uh, help in creating that? So as I said uh, before, um, we're taking the Kubernetes native approach where we're not providing any kind of secret sauce or doing anything kind of special. So we provide a templating system that makes it really easy for people to define infrastructure providers uh, that we can run on top of, whether that's Amazon Web Services, Google, and so on. If you had a custom cloud that was running inside of your business and you had its own API, we make it very easy for you to use these templates to basically provide additional support for that as a target for deploying clusters. Then we have a templating system for the clusters themselves. So you can define the size of the clusters, what get payloads get deployed on them, um, what the ingress is, what the CNI is, what the CSI is, all in sort of a very, very easy way to basically standardize on, to make repeatable and so on. Again, it's a template. Uh, which is a very standard way of doing things in Kubernetes land. And then again, when it comes to the services or workloads that run on top of it, we've got a whole set of uh, service templates there. We've got a service catalog that is actually part of it that you can use and extend. And then we're moving in the very short future and short term future to basically set up that service catalog capability. So um, that it will talk to secure OCI registries in a very clean way. So you'll be able to add uh, your own service templates to that catalog um, in, a, in a secure manner so that you can take care of your software supply chain. Is there any commercial angle? By commercial angle, I mean, uh, sometimes a lot of folks, when they use open source product, they do want a throat to choke. Not everybody has all the technical expertise. So is Cordon also going to be... Uh, uh, is Mirant is going to offer any support for Cordon or it's purely community-based uh, project? We're not altruists. We, we're a business. We have to make money. So, you know, Cordon, uh, you could think of as a family. So Cordon OSS is the baseline, as I said. There will be a Cordon Enterprise, and then there will be some other things that will be very interesting as well. Um, Cordon Enterprise will be available in the very near future. We're just tying off the loose ends on that. That'll be that hardened version of Cordon OSS that's got all the goodness, the secure supply chain, validated service templates, all the things that you need to know that you can bring it into your business and run securely, air-gapped installations, you know, all that kind of stuff, right? You know, tier one support for vSphere, Active Directory integration, all the stuff that you would expect from an enterprise product, right? So that's coming. I'm, I'm pretty sure that we'll see an announcement about it in the near future. I'm probably going to get in trouble for saying as much as I have. But yeah, the, you know, just like you've seen with the rest of our family of products, we've got an open source baseline, and then we've got sort of the enterprise version of that that we are happy to provide to enterprise customers. These days, uh, new open source technology, luckily it is open source, so it's good, DeepSeek, uh, which has kind of uh, shook the whole market. It's even making OpenAI to think about its own open source strategy. What, are, what is your take on DeepSeek? There are no moats in AI land. There have not been moats from the beginning. Uh, it's kind of been, from my personal perspective, a joke that um, people thought that they could get out and you know basically keep this technology to themselves as proprietary. Um, OpenAI is building on top of uh, you know transformers, which came out of Google. Um, you know they did something interesting. You know there's no doubt about it, but you know there is no moat. And perhaps most importantly, I find it uh, hilarious that people um, will say things like, "There's no more data to train on." There's over a hundred zettabytes, Z, as in zettabytes, behind the enterprise firewalls. Ten to twenty zettabytes is being generated every year inside of enterprises. Only two of 
2% of which is retained. All of these enterprises have huge, vast treasure troves of proprietary data, dark data that they're going to want to use to get competitive advantage. Healthcare companies with petabytes and petabytes of digi digital radiology images, MRIs, X-rays, CAT scans. Financial services companies with tens to hundreds of years of financial data. They're going to want to use that. They're going to want to power it with AI. They're going to want to use it for the next generation of tools and services that they use to deliver value into the business. And they're not moving that all out to open AI and chat GPT. They're going to leverage open source AI models like DeepSeek. They're going to need a way to manage all that. And that's part of why we created Cordon is we think that it's gone from Kubernetes sprawl to soon it's going to be AI sprawl. We're going to see a complete revolution in turn inside the enterprise where every application is basically going to have an AI back end. And what that means is you've got to control all that. You've got to manage it all. You've got to figure out a way to get to that AI transformation inside the business. And you need to do it fast. And the people who do it fast will reap the benefits. And those who do not will get left by the wayside. Rene, thank you so much for joining me today and talk about this open source project from Mirantius. And I look forward to our next discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Swap.